Hey everyone, uh, welcome to the Investor Secrets on how to increase your home value, your home equity in 2021 while you're preparing to put your home on the market. Also, a lot of people may be investors looking to um, find the secrets into the best approach to fix and flip homes. And I think the approach of taking your current home and looking at it through the lens of an investor is a smart way to do this. My name is Nate McLean. I'm the owner of the Nate McLean Real Estate Group in Wenatchee, Washington. We have offices in Leavenworth, all the way up to Oroville, up in Okanagan, Met Health Twist, Lake Chelan, Grant County, you name it. Over my career, I've sold over 5,000 homes or nearly 5,000 homes, I lost count, and a billion dollars in sales. And through that process, I've been able to see what works and what doesn't work. And I've also been able to work with a lot of investors with millions of dollars in portfolio that have shown me or given me knowledge on what works and what doesn't work when it comes to maximizing the value. And through advising clients, homeowners, I've seen, I've given advice and seen this, what, what advice sellers take and what they don't take and been able to see the different impacts on that advice. For instance, if I give someone an advice on to remodel a bathroom, they may not take the advice, even though I've given them the advice. So I get to see what happens when they don't do it. And then I get another client that does do the bathroom remodel and I get to see the impact that has in the marketplace. So this is real, this isn't theory, this is actual, um, experience that's been implemented and I'm going to be able to give it to you today because I want everyone here that owns real estate or will own more real estate to maximize the value of that real estate because the more more value obviously the more equity you have and the more equity you have the more you can pay off debts that you have in the future leverage for more investments and just further your life and that really that's why I'm giving this information is I want everyone to increase the quality of their life that's my mission through real estate to help people increase in quality of life. Um, so we're gonna slide over to our, our the slide deck that I started for everybody. And this is, this is gonna be recorded. Um, so if you miss something, don't worry, I'm gonna send you the, the, the notes um, and all the content. So investor seekers to increase your home's value in preparation to sell in 2021. Uh, last year in 2020, the marketplace uh, went topsy-turvy. I mean, we've been on a bull run in housing for the last nine years, 10 years. Bull meaning prices have gone up over the last nine or 10 years. And so what people think works really is just the market going up. So a lot of people have made repairs or improvements to their home, and they think that's increased the value of their home. But in fact, it didn't. Or maybe it did, or maybe it didn't. Maybe it was the marketplace that, that actually went up. So I'm gonna uncover that for you guys today. Um, why you should listen to me. And I don't, you know, again, I'm not, I'm not an expert per se. I wanna be humble here. I, I grew up in Clay Ellum, small town near 3000 people. And I was a pilot and then I turned it into a real estate advisor. Sold a billion dollars in real estate, not to bray, just to impress, not to just to impress upon you, not to impress you. Uh, 5,000 homes. Um, I've successfully personally personally, and successfully fixed and flipped homes for extra income. And I've helped other clients realize millions of dollars in untapped equity by taking advantage of some of these secrets. So I want to start with how to flip your house for more money. And let's look at you know how fixing and flipping should work, the process that I use to fix and flip homes. Because what people think about fixing and flipping homes, they think about Home and Garden Network or um, Chip and Joanne or Fix or Flop. And what, if you were gonna make a 30 minute television show, you're gonna do it a lot differently than if you're gonna fix and flip a home to make money. That's the truth. What really works wouldn't be good TV and what, what makes good TV doesn't really work. So I'm gonna uncover this for you guys right now. The first, first and foremost, the first thing that you wanna do when, if you're looking to sell your home for the most money or prepare to sell your home for the most money, or even you're taking on a new investment or you have a rental that you're getting to, to go on the marketplace, the first thing you do 
And this is probably one of the top ROIs, ROI meaning return on investment, is a trash shell. The, the, the fuzzy and, and polite way of putting trash out, as realtors actually say, is declutter. But it really is trash out. It's the first thing investors do is they bring in trucks, they bring in trailers, they bring in rakes, and they take everything out or the majority of everything out. We call it decluttering in our home. If you look at my office right here, there's, it's very Spartan, very, not a lot in here, right? So I'm gonna take everything out first. This is a huge ROI. I would invest in trash hauling companies, um, landscape companies, uh, junk haulers. In fact, if you need some references as we go through here, if you're thinking, ah, I could use somebody to come over my house, we have three or four different junk hauling companies that we use that are very inexpensive and will make a massive impact on your property. I mean, everything. So I recently flipped, a, actually helped a client fix and flip an investment that they had. And we spent $4,000 on trash out. Yeah, $4,000 on trash out. Seems like a lot of money. It probably made them $20,000, right? So $4,000 to make $20,000, that's a good deal. So step one, you get everything out. Step two, landscape cleanup. Now, not landscape being landscape cleanup. Big difference. Landscape being doesn't do much to your bottom line. Very little. In fact, you can spend way too much mo money on landscape and not get it back. And this I hear all the time, too, is because home sellers want to wait until the spring for the for the marketplace because the landscape's gonna look nice, the grass will be green and the flowers will be in bloom. But really, it doesn't have that much of an impact. What has a negative impact is dead debris, overgrown bushes, overgrown trees, old trees that are past their lifespan, um, just deferred maintenance in the yard. So the, the first thing I do is I trash out the house. The second thing I do is I clean up the landscaping. This is like a spring cleaning. And it doesn't matter what time of year it is, as long as there's no snow, I have a landscape crew come in and do a cleanup. This can cost anywhere between $300 and $3,000. Um, I even have uh, tree removal companies come in and remove trees. I mean, you can transform a property by removing a tree that's overgrown. It's maybe the branches are touching the, the roof and that's not good for inspections either. So. These little things are the secrets to, to massive profits. So if you need a, by the way, we have landscape companies that can come in and clean it up because the same landscape company that cleans up isn't the same company that does your maintenance. It's a different type of landscape. The same you know, company that does nice landscaping doesn't do cleanups. You want to clean up landscape crew. Massive impact to a property, massive impact and instant equity instant value to your bottom line. So it's not necessarily about, again, I wanna say, it's not about the green grass or the flowers. It's not about adding, it's about subtracting, right? See, everyone wants to fix and flip and, and increase the value of your home by adding things. And so the theme here is, what do I need to get rid of? What kind of distractions, what, what's taking away from value? Because what's taking away from value is your profit. Because if we can remove that distraction, that's profit to your bottom line versus throwing money at new things that, that may not get your money back. And we're going to go over that. In fact, a little teaser here, but if you stick, a, stick around, we're going to talk about remodeling your house and what to remodel and not to remodel. Also, if you stay to the end, I'm going to give you a, a um, I'll email you a, a flyer. It's actually a brochure. Uh, brochure, probably a, a report on how to increase the value of your home up to 18%. So little things you can do that add up to 18% more money. The third thing is we go through the house, we go through the property, and we look for deferred maintenance. Deferred maintenance. Deferred maintenance would be things that the lender would call out the lender would call out as required repairs. So I don't really care that too much about home inspectors 
everyone's always worried about home inspectors. I mostly am worried about the, the appraiser or the lender because they're the ones that are gonna, they're the gatekeepers to the money, to the money, right? The home inspectors aren't gatekeepers to the money. The home inspector is the protector of the buyer. Their job is to protect the buyer. The appraiser's there to protect the lender, the gatekeeper of the money. So I wanna make the appraiser as happy as possible. So lender required repairs would be things like chipping and peeling paint, a roof that has less than five years of useful life, um, uh, exposed wiring, torn and ripped carpet, um, any health and safety things, CO2 detectors and smoke alarms and hot water tank scraps. Those are the deferred maintenance that I'm gonna go in and fix, right? I'm not worried about home inspectors. I'm worried about that. I'm gonna fix that because when I go to put the home on the marketplace, I want everyone, I want more buyers and I want all buyers with all loan programs. Right? The more demand, price is a function of supply and demand. The more demand, the more buyers available and interested and, and capable of buying this home, the more money I'm going to get. So VA buyers, FHA buyers, low down buyers, 20% down buyers, jumbo loan buyers. I want them all, right? So I'm going to clean up the deferred maintenance, right? Next thing we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to look at the walls, the exterior and interior walls in terms of paint. Right, and I like the devil's in the detail here. Pinholes, um, a good drywaller can make a home look amazing. Right, after after years of um, putting things on the wall, you know, wallpaper, popcorn ceilings, you know, patches. A good drywaller is massive ROI return on investment. A good painter, massive ROI on investment. And I highly recommend professional painters because they've done this over and over again and they know the secrets to making things look new and fresh, new and fresh. And that's what paint does by far. I stock and paint. This is it's massive, right? So if you if you're on this webinar because you want the, the sexy, glamorous, glitzy things. You're going to find you're going to be disappointed, right? It's about this part of it. Now, I hear this all the time with homeowners. I don't, do I have to paint the room? Because I don't want to pick a color and find out the buyer doesn't like that color, right? Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. You want neutral colors. If you look at this room I'm in now, my office, this is, um, Worldly gray, worldly gray is a good one, a gray. Or you can do a white. You might think that's boring. It sells, it sells. So the first thing a buyer's gonna do when they buy your home is they're gonna make it their own. But they don't have much imagination. So if they see something with a lot of pop, like reds, greens, browns, um, they, they're gonna be turned off. We want everyone to, if you look at cars right now, look what's happened to cars, car colors, pearl white, white, silver, right? Black, gray, right? They, they're very, very neutral. And then they might pop in different, uh, pop in different areas. And I'll show you how to pop in different areas. And so what we're gonna do with your house is we're gonna, we're gonna match the new, new car auto manufacturers. You think they know a little bit about what buyers want and what they're, what a, what they're appealing to. And then we're gonna make them pop with lighting, with lighting. I say this, you cannot go wrong with more lighting. LED lights, if you're in Chelan County right now, by the way, Chelan County's uh, incentives on LED lights are incredible. In fact, they're pretty, pretty much gonna pay for all of your lighting. So I uh, take my webcam up, you can see my, uh, my light there and you can see my can light back there. LED can lights throughout the house, Re remodel, redo them, right? And then get, get, get have a flashy light in the, in the dining room or in the kitchen or in the bathroom. 
uh, 50, $100, lampsplus.com. Massive, massive, massive ROI on lighting. Massive ROI on lighting. We want to make the, the property in the home as, as bright and vibrant as possible. These are the secrets, right? These are the secrets. In fact, when you watch Home and Garden Network, they do these massive remodels. And what they don't tell you is they have a professional videographer and production crew that are bringing in huge, huge lights, additional lights to the property. So you're watching the TV show thinking, wow, that looks amazing. It's because they brought in more lights, brought in more lights. And so I'll give you a little insight on that. If you look at my, this webinar right now, yeah, I brought in more lights just for this webinar. Lighting is the secret sauce. It is the secret sauce. Now, now you see why I talked about painting and drywall first, because you don't want to add more light to the old paint job, the, the green or the browns or the, it's gonna show the imperfections in the wall. So you fix the imperfections and then, it, then you just blast it with light, blast it with light. And that really sells and it really increases the value. Not only that is, in real life, it's going to change it. And in the fo photos and videos when you're marketing them, because remember, price is a function of supply and demand. Luckily for homeowners right now, the supply is extremely low. So it's not about, it's not whether or not your home will sell in today's marketplace, but it's how much money are you leaving on the table by not doing these secrets. So if you're on this webinar, you're in the right spot because Homeowners are selling and they're bragging about what they're getting, but what they don't know is how much they've left on the table. So we brought in a ton of light. Now we're going to bring in the cleaners prior to going on market. And we're going to hire a professional cleaning company or, or you're, going to, you're going to get down and dirty and clean it yourself. $300, $500 changes everything. I just built a new house and it, it was brand new and we weren't really feeling it. And then we brought in a cleaning crew on a brand new house. And after the cleaning crew went through, we would, we were like transformed a home, transformed the home. You know, car dealerships know this the best. Clean cars sell for more money. And it's instant equity. It's instant profit. There's so much money in cleanliness. It's, it's out of control. It's, it's so amazing. So now that you have this, this house that's been trashed out, Deferred maintenance. And in fact, if you, any moment, if you, if you guys actually have real examples or questions, let me know, or real homes, we can, we can help you out with that. But you clean the house. Now you can go in and stage it. So we wanted to remove everything. Now we can add some things. Furniture, decor, artwork, um, plants. As you can see in my office, I put a little plant for this webinar, things like this to bring in some color. If I was actually going to sell this office or this home, I'd bring in a little bit more color. So I, the, house is, the house is the blank slate, and then the decor, the furniture, and the, and the artwork are the, the color, and the lighting is the color. There's two major things we need to understand when it comes to getting the most money and where to put our money in our home. And that is, there's, there's a clear difference between what's maintenance and what's a capital improvement. Maintenance are costs that are associated with owning a home beyond just utility. Things wear out and as they wear out, they need to be fixed. So if a light, if this is where the money's at, a light fixture, only one light bulb works or it's not working properly. You need to improve that. It's actually taking money away from you. So by improving it, you get all the money back that it was taking away, plus whatever cost you put into it, minus a little bit. Um, torn and ripped carpet, older carpets, dated carpets, dated colors, worn, uh, end, of the, end of useful life appliances, um, countertops that are scratched, or you know, there's little deferred maintenance. 
HVAC systems that need filters and services. These are all maintenance expenses. They're really not expenses that have ROI necessarily. There are things that are associated with owning a home. A lot of times people think that they get money back on that. It depends. Capital improvements are when you're gonna go in and spend capital expenditures to improve a property. This could include like a kitchen remodel, a bathroom remodel, new flooring, tearing, tearing out walls or major remodels, doing an addition right? Adding a garage. These are capital improvements. And we're going to go over the top capital improvements that you can do to increase the value of your home. Um, these are major, these are major items. So one would be like, one question would be, is a new roof a capital improvement or maintenance? Well, roofs go back, roofs are typically good for 30 years. So if you put a new roof on a house and that roof was 30 years old, it needed it needed it. Now, if your home was probably worth less with that old roof, and now you spent money on a new roof, and now it brought it up to, to market value. So let's look at the COPS first value report. Here are the top nine areas you can put money in your house, and then it tells you how much money you're going to get back. And this should be a shocker for a lot of people, because the first thing, you know, Chip and Joanne do on their show, or fix or flop, is they go in there and they gut the house. They gut it and start tearing down walls. I gotta tell you something. If you start doing that at your house, you're gonna lose a ton of money. You're gonna lose a ton of time. You're gonna be frustrated. You're gonna be disappointed. The reason why Chip and Joanne and Fix or Flop can go in and uh, knock down walls is because they're on a television show and they want, they're making entertainment and they're making money off of your enjoyment and your advertising dollars and their advertisers getting your eyeballs. Nobody's watching you knock down your house. So no one's gonna pay you extra for doing it. So I want you to, before you grab that sledgehammer, I want you to call me because unless you're getting advertising, you might not wanna do it. Not only that is, but Chip and Joanne, they bought it right. They bought it knowing they were going to tear down walls. Most homeowners did not buy something at a price that allowed them to tear out their kitchen. So the number one rule about investing is buy right. Because if you buy it wrong, there's nothing you can do to get that money back. So we got to be smart with homeowners. Homeowners, if you want to maximize your equity, be really smart. Garage door replacements, number one. Isn't that amazing? And that's just the garage doors because garage doors are fairly inexpensive. In my new home, I have a three-car garage. Very, very grateful for that. Never had that before. The brand new garage doors with Wi-Fi garage door openers, the new ones that are attached to the walls, uh, you can hook up on your, you can get an app to open and close them. You can, you can tell if they're open or closed across the country. It's really cool because I remember we used to drive down the, the driveway and, and my wife would be like, did we shut the garage? I hope we did. We have to turn around and check. The app tells us now. $3,500 for three new garage doors. Beautiful. Completely changes the appearance of your house and they have a higher R value, insulation value, they open and close quietly and they look amazing. So number one, but check it out. You only get 97% of your money back. So if you spend a dollar, you get 97 cents back, right? But the reason it's number one is because of curb appeal. Most in America, or most, most homes that are, that are being designed right now have the garage where you can see the garage when you pull it from the house. So that first impression is important. I want you to remember that principle. First impressions, the law of primacy. It's all about the buyer's experience and impression of your house. That's where the money's at. So as they're pulling up, what do they see? What do they think? It's kind of like a nice wrapping paper. It's, it's, it's a good wrapping on the, on the present, right? 
or with food. They say you eat with your eyes before your mouth or your stomach, right? You eat with your eyes. So think about your home's appearance, but from the outside first, outside in. You could have the best home in the world in the inside, but if the outside doesn't look good, it's not going to sell us for the same amount of money. Just like food, it might be the best tasting food in the world, but if it doesn't look appealing, it's going to be a hard sell. That restaurant's going to have a hard hard time uh, making it. So we're going to we're going to look at that curb appeal, and I want to talk about landscaping too later on about that because with that principle, does the front yard landscaping is that more important than the backyard landscaping? Knowing the principle that I just shared with you. 110%. In fact, builders have figured this out. Builders don't even offer landscaping because they know it's a poor ROI. They don't get their money back on landscape. But a lot of homeowners put so much stock in their landscaping. It's because they actually enjoy the landscaping and that's what they want. And oftentimes that's what the homeowner has sweat equity in. So since they actually use their harder time, right, on the home, they feel like that they should be getting that back. But the buyer doesn't care about landscaping. Just like, just like painting, they're gonna, they're gonna do their own landscaping. The backyard landscaping, terrible ROI. Backyard patios, backyard uh, um, hot tubs, pool, well, pools are pretty good right now, but, um, all the backyard are wonderful fountains and rockeries. You should do those for your in enjoyment, for your pleasure, right? So you need to extract all the value from that. That should be a labor of love and something you enjoyed while you, while you live there. But for getting it ready for the market, the buyer will, by the time they make it to the backyard, the buyer has already made their buying decision. Let me say that again. By the time they made it to the backyard, the buyer has already made their buying decision. So let's focus on the front yard. Let's focus on the garage doors. Number two, manufactured stone veneer. That stone veneer is on the front of the house. Stone veneer gives it a custom look, but even so, it's still not, it's still not dollar for dollar back, right? Number three, kitchen remodel but minor, not major. In fact, I didn't even put major on here because major's way down there. Major kitchen remodel would be basically you're gutting the kitchen. New cabinets, new layout, and a new layout requires new electrical and new plumbing, okay? A minor kitchen remodel is appliances, backsplash, fixtures like faucets. Faucets. That's it. So you're a minor kitchen remodel. You, you could probably do a minor kitchen remodel anywhere between a couple thousand dollars and ten thousand um, dollars. New quartz. In most average kitchens, you can get new quartz countertops for three or four thousand dollars. And you paint you paint the cabinets, or you put new handles on them, and you get a new appliance package for twenty five hundred dollars. Changes the game. Changes your kitchen. Boom. You're gonna make tons of money back on that. That's a good one. That's a good ROI in today's market. Um, number four is a deck, wood. Just because I, this is why a deck's so high. Um, deck addition wood, it's, it's great square footage. So there's interior square footage and the exterior living square footage. Decks are inexpensive exterior square footage. With COVID too, with COVID and the pandemic, Buyers are looking for homes that are that are that have entertainment, outside entertainment. Where can I host a party or a group of friends or a small group of friends outside? So look for decks that are wood and uh, patios, concrete patios are really great too. And so your entryway concrete patio, concrete is fairly inexpensive for, for the impact. The deck that we did on our new house is a uh, concrete deck, a concrete deck, great option, great option. Siding replacement can be very spendy, so be careful on the siding replacement. Steel doors or front doors, 
75%. But here's a tip. Your, home, your door may be better than a new door. It may be a real wood door that a refinish, right? A sand and refinish will be a, a massive ROI, maybe a new handle, upgraded handle and hinges. I've done that on my fix, my fix and flips is I, I've gone through homes and kept my doors, but changed the handles and the hinges and upgraded those. So instead of 100, 150, $200 per door, I'm looking at $20 per door and, it, and I paint them white, changes the game, sells for way more money. In fact, you can see my door back there, just a new handle, that handle is on build.com for $6. And it's super modern, uh, matte black finish. And then you buy the hinges that are probably like $1.50 a piece and you paint the door white and it looks amazing, right? It looks amazing. That's a brand new door, but I think a, uh, an older door would look just as good. Now, any door with a hole, now we're looking at maintenance problems. That's a maintenance problem. Any holes or scratches or dings you can't fix, especially hollow cores, replace them, replace them. But you don't need solid core on the remodel when you're going to sell. Remember, you're selling it. You don't own it anymore. So it's all about money and profit. Um, roof replacement, 68%. Roofers right now are getting really expensive. I do have a couple of you need some recommendations in North Central Washington that are that are doing amazing and, and are pricing really good. Um, composition or comp roofs, 30 years. Um, if you, if you have any missing tiles or it's really deteriorating, you might want to replace that. You might want to replace that. Uh, bathroom remodels, obviously we're getting down there. And then backyard patios, not backyard landscaping. Again, sellers always want to wait for the flowers. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Okay. Now, what really moves the needle? What really moves the needle? And so I'm going to go over the five laws to increasing your home sales price and the single most important decision you can make because price is a function of supply and demand. So we prepared your home for sale, right? And now we need to maximize the value. So here are the five laws. First, I want to explain the death of the CMA. And if you don't know what a CMA means, it means comparable market analysis. So a real estate agent was going to value your home based on what has sold because your home's worth what someone's willing to pay. Therefore, if it's worth what someone's willing to pay, we need to find out what people have paid for other homes like yours. So they look three months, six months in arrears to see what's sold. Well, here's why it doesn't work. Because in today's market with COVID, prices have changed so rapidly that if you're pricing your home based on what happened in the past, you're leaving tons of money on the table. Home prices went up 22% in 2020. I'll say it again, home prices went up 22% in 2020. So if I took a sale that sold, let's say that's 2% a month, let's say six months ago or five months ago, that's 10%. So if that home sold for 400, it's now worth 440 now. So if a real estate agent is telling me that my home's worth 400, I'm losing $40,000 because I get a CMA. Don't use a CMA to price your home. Don't use Zestimate to price your home because it's looking at the past. You have to look at now and forecast into the future. Forecast into the future. And there's, there's indicators we use to look at the, the future market as well. It has to do with uh, inventory levels, absorption rates, timing, seasonality, uh, bond market, treasury markets, mortgage rates. That's what we look at. Now, should you look at recent sales? Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm not saying discount all of it, but I'm just saying don't use it you know, by itself. You could be losing money on the table. People are selling their homes, but they're leaving, leaving money on the table. So the first law that we all need to understand we all need to understand this, is money flows to what is different. Let me say that again. Money flows to what is different, not what is the same. Money that flows to what is the same is the commodity. 
right? So what's the, you ever priced out a gallon of milk recently? Or priced out a gallon of gas? It doesn't differ much, does it in price? It might be 10 cents here, five cents here. But have you ever priced out a watch? Have you ever priced out a timepiece? That differs greatly, right? You got a, you got you got a Timex, and then you got a Rolex. They both do the same thing, but massively different prices. So why is that differentiation? Differentiation. And so there's lots of different ways to think about differentiation when it comes to your home. How is your home different than the competition? How are you marketing it so that it, it shows up differently? And here's a couple of things you can do that are counterintuitive. You can offer a home warranty on your house. You can stage the home. You can um, offer incentives. And you might be saying, Nick, in a seller's market, why would I offer incentives? Well, because you want more buyers. Buyers are a function of supply and demand. And if you get one home, if you get one offer versus 10 offers, or one offer versus three offers, it's probably $25,000. And I hear this all the time from homeowners. It only takes one. It only takes one buyer. But I'm telling you from experience, in today's market, one buyer versus three buyers, $25,000. Because when you have more than one, they, they, they fight for your home. So you wanna differentiate your home. You differentiate your home from Home, uh, home warranties, uh, clean cleanliness, declutter, staging. Uh, you can do pre-inspection, so have your home pre-inspected, things like that. Now, we also want to differentiate your home online. So when you go to put your home online for sale, you want to tap into the law of exposure and differentiate yourself online. 94, 95% of all buyers find their home or search for homes online. So it's about presenting your home online at the highest possible level or the best possible light. The law of exposure is important because you also want to differentiate yourself by having professional photography of your home, but not just any professional photography because it's funny that I have so many friends that decided to become a photographer. Well, they're not as, let's be honest, they're not as good as, someone that's been doing it for 10 years. So a, an amazing photographer. And then here's the new one. Since COVID hit, the consumer expects, vi expects video on their home. Since COVID, a year ago, when it comes to real estate and purchasing, they want video. They want video. Think about Amazon. So you get on Amazon and you're looking at, hey, I just bought something actually the other day. I want to show it to you. But, um, I have it. I bought a little mic and it showed the photos of the microphone and it also had a video of the microphone. I watched the video to show the features. People want video. So video of your home is absolutely important when it comes to exposure. To also having it available on all the major websites, Zillow, Trulia, Realtor.com, Redfin. Um, we put homes on like 10,000 10, different websites. So a lot of exposure. If you live in Wenatchee or Chelan or North Central Washington, get this, 70 or 80% of the buyers are from out of the area. So the only way you're gonna reach them is online. So an online strategy is really important. Law of cooperation. Now, you get these buyers, you wanna cooperate with as many buyers as possible. Now, here's, here's the other thing. You, you, have, you have buyers in town, you have buyers out of town. The, the number of buyers available to your home are, that are out of town far exceed the number of buyers that are in town. Okay. You wanna expose your home to both. Okay. The third buyer is working with a broker already. 90% of all buyers use real estate agents. So we want to cooperate with other real estate agents. So we're gonna put, we would put a home on the North Central Washington Multiple Listing Service and the North Central Washington Multiple Listing Service and cooperate with them. So we want to tap into all the top brokers and let them know your home's for sale. 
So they bring the buyers because our goal is to get multiple buyers to a home because when we get multiple buyers to a home, the value goes up, the value goes up. And brokers, here's the thing about brokers. Brokers want it an easy sell. Brokers want an easy sell, right? They're human, right? They want to work less and make more. Okay, well, let's take advantage of that. They also like to show homes that are clean and decluttered. So all those things I was talking about earlier, by the way, if you do those things, you're actually tapping into the law of cooperation because you're making it easier to sell. Now you might be thinking, I don't want it to be easier to sell. I want them to earn their money. Yeah, you do. But trust me, if a home is not trashed out or it smells or it's not clean or it's not painted, the agents talk. So they'll show a home, 123 Main Street, and then they'll go back and tell the office, hey, did you see that home? It's, ah, it's no good. My buyers didn't like it. That's a tough sell. That's not going to, nah, it's overpriced. But if they show a home and it's awesome, like it's awesome, they're going to tell everybody. Real estate agents love people and they love to communicate. And so that's, we want them, we want to control that narrative and we want them communicating positively about a home. Chip and Joanne, I, I, I'm picking on them today. Home and Garden Network knows this. When they put a home on the market at the end of the show, they get real estate agents involved, right? They get involved. If you watch Millionaire, uh, Millionaire, million, million Dollar Listing New York, Million Dollar Listing LA, they get other brokers involved. And so that's what we do in our team is we get a lot of people involved. Bring your buyers. You're going to love this home. You're going to sell this home. The buy, law of buyer acquisition is an, an, an important one too because do you have a strategy in place for when a buyer actually calls on a property or is interested in a property? So it's one thing to get them attracted to it, but it's another one. Can you answer the phone? Can you convert them on the sale? And so we actually, when we put a sign in the ground in our property, this is shocking to me. The, the actual National Association, National Association of Realtors did a study and found that real estate agents return phone calls within 24 hours or on average 24 hours later. Which means if someone calls a sign in the yard, the buyer's really interested. They probably saw it on Zillow. They saw it on the website, McLeanRealEstate.com. And they drove by the property, they called the sign and nobody answered. They're long gone, right? So when someone calls our sign, we actually have, it, it rings multiple agents so we don't drop calls, no missed calls. The next law to get the most money is you could do everything right, but be really terrible at negotiating and lose all your profit, right? So being really skilled and masterful in the law of negotiation is very, very important. So having a real estate broker on your side that can negotiate, that's negotiated something like 5,000 deals like I have, can make a major impact on your bottom line. I've been able to negotiate multiple offer situations or single offer situations up 30, 40, 50, $60,000 in price. And remember this, it's not where you start, it's where you end. So you know, never throw out an offer. We want as many as possible. So the, the art of negotiation is really, really important. It has a major impact because I can prove this again. I can prove it to you that this is very important because if you were terrible at negotiations, but you did everything right, could you lose all your profit? Yeah, you could. So there's ways to be masterful in negotiations. You want to negotiate from a, a position of strength. You want to make it as easy as possible, hassle-free convenience. You want to make it as convenient as possible for the buyer. The harder you make it for the buyer, the less the buyer is going to give you. So think about removing friction. So we're going to remove friction in the process. So that's, that's the end of my, my presentation to this point. I wanted to open up to any questions and um, any questions you might have when it comes to what projects you would want to do, what you don't want to do when it comes to getting your home ready to the marketplace, 
one of the most common questions I'm asked is, should I do X or what would that do to my, my value? Maybe you have questions about the marketplace. What's going on? Is the, is the market going to crash? Is there a, are we in a bubble? Um, where would I go? Anything like that. You, if you have a question, type it into the, the Q&A chat box and I'll be happy to answer it. You know, one thing we've, we've done a lot when it comes to um, fixing up homes is, well, recently I, I've been taking advantage of tree removal. Tree mo removal has been fantastic to Im improve the, the, the backyard and the front yard for very little, little money down. So is the market cooling? Or is it staying hot? I can tell you what, you know, recently sales are down. So in the first quarter, sales are down 25%. 25% sales are down. 